Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Giuseppe D'Angelo. Right. Yo, okay. Okay. Very colored room, indeed. Hello, everybody. My name is Giuseppe D'Angelo. I work for KDAB. And the next 45 minutes, I hope to bring you up to speed from like zero to being able to at least submit your very first patch to Qt. Contributed to Qt is quite an easy process, although there are a bit of to-dos, a bit of you know, guidelines to follow, and people may get scared. Uh, I think it's actually very easy to do. I'm going to prove it by doing all the setup locally while in this very talk. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't like talking about myself, but basically the thing that could most interest you, I guess, is the fact that I'm a long-time Qt user and a Qt approver in the project. That means I do submit code, I do code reviews, I can actually stage patches done by others and merge them in mainline Qt. Uh, you may know me, I'm Pepe on the mailing list, IOC channels, so yeah, that's me. Uh, I want to go very long about this, but yeah, it's important to underline that it ha not, it's not, it has not always been the case that you could actually submit code to Qt. Historically, especially up to Nokia times, it was impossible to merge code into mainline Qt. There was a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one was a legal reason, so basically there was no contribution model set up, so people like back in the day could just not accept code from third parties. And the second reason was a technical one, that is the repositories were actually closed. People could not see or well, could not access the code in the repository, could not like branch it, do their own modifications and submit patches back because it was just like behind the doors. So in 2011, almost three years ago now, actually precisely two years ago I believe, the Qt project was born. It was an open source project, and we decided to just borrow guidelines from any other open source project out there. So we decided to implement actually a governance model, which models how the Qt project drives itself, and we chose to follow what's basically, you know, the principles behind every open source project. Uh, open source projects in general drive towards those four principles, principles over there which mean they're towards meritocracy, not a democracy. If you are good, you deserve more voice than if you're not good, <laughs> I'm sorry. But they tend to be inclusive at the same time, so no one gets left behind for any reason. We don't we have any prejudice behind you. And it's fair at the same time. We don't look at you, we don't look at the company you're working for, we actually look at you know, the work you do. If it's good, then you, we want your work. If it's not good, sorry. <laughs> and also transparent. Uh, all decisions happen now in the public. There are public mailing lists, public meetings. Uh, you get reports from them and you can actually be a voice in the and drive Qt. The whole idea was that, of course, uh, DJ is one of the main contributors, yes, but there are also other key players in the scene. So we wanted to add features to Qt or fix bug reports that other people were not interested in fixing. And therefore we just decided, yeah, this is the right model. We can actually drive Qt and steer it towards our needs. We can actually bring more stuff into Qt, so make Qt an overall better product. And in, in the end, of course, I work from KDAB, so this just gave us much more, much more opportunities, right? I basically took this diagram from the original announcement. This is basically a schematic of the various roles inside the Qt project. There are four main roles. Uh, actually, I like to underline there are actually five roles, but once one is not there. So at the bottom of the pyramid, you can see they're just like the ordinary users. They're actually the developers that use Qt, but don't do anything for Qt, right? They don't contribute code back, they don't write bad reports, they don't do anything about the product itself. So they're just like them below. Then there's the contributors level, 
who is made by the people who actually do something for Qt. They may even just like write back reports, triage bugs, submit documentation, submit examples, or just like write code, write features. And then, well, it's not very interesting to go all the way above, but basically there are approvers, maintainers, and Lars, who is the chief maintainer. And those are they're actually the people who can, who have the powers to stage patches into Qt. So contributors may write something, but they don't have the powers to actually do, to actually click the magic button that drives a patch from elsewhere into the Qt code base. There is, of course, a process, an open process to go up this pyramid. So when you submit code and people see, okay, this is a good guy, we want to make him an approver, so there's a public process to go up that pyramid. It's, as I said, it's completely meritocratic and transparent. Don't worry about that. And I hope by the end of this talk that I will convince you that you want to become one of those four categories. You want to stop being just an ordinary user, but no get over there and start doing work for Qt. If you use it every day, I'm totally sure there is just one small annoying bug that you know that it's just like one liner fix and nobody ever fixed it. So please do it yourself. We're, you're very welcome. Does this thing work? Yes, works very well in practice. You can see some numbers now. I just go briefly through the stats, but basically we're talking about 20% of commits it every week, or so every year, that are not from DJ. And I just basically stolen these graphs. Uh, these are, this is the percentage of commits in the last few weeks. Of course, the big chunk below is DJ, but there is a good chunk above it, as you can see. Almost 20% is not from DJ. And this is the absolute number. Of course, it goes up and down. There's some vacations over there, I guess. And if we exclude DJ from the picture, those are the other main contributors to Qt. So as you can see, the green line over there is KDAB, the, there is yellow line red, Intel, well, it's just Chago, I believe. <laughs> just one person uh, does that purple over there. And we're looking at a staggering 20% of commits that don't come from DJ at all, so yeah. End of the theory, let's just do something. Okay, how does it work in practice? It's quite easy, there's basically you two main step. One is just like a setup you need to do once, which basically consists, as you can imagine, cloning the code, compiling it and so on, I'm going to see it. And then once we do that, only once, we can start making any patches we want. Okay, so the setup, it's nothing magic. You have to create an account, I'm sorry for that. So we just go on bug reports, qtproject.org, click login, click sign up, and we create an account there. Pretty straightforward. Using the very same credentials you get on bug reports, you then go to the code review website, which is code review qtproject.org, and you know, accept the CLA. I will explain what the CLA is in a moment. And also on that website, you can upload your SSH key, which is needed for you know, pushing stuff using Git. Yeah, optionally, you can configure SSH, but that's just like an optional step. Uh, a small note about these slides, of course, I'm going to publish them, so don't worry about taking notes or whatever. I'm just using them to remind myself all the steps. That's fine. Yeah, as I said, a small note about the contribution, contributor license agreement. It's basically the legal requirement that was missing back in the day to let you publish stuff. So it works this way. You basically retain copyright on your code. You're not giving your code away for free, so since you're retaining copyright, you're free to reuse that code elsewhere. We don't take your copyright. It just gives DJ the authorization to change the license it, so to publish it under LGPL 2 or 3, depending on the module, and of course under the commercial license. It's something you give back, because DJ, of course, it's funding all of this. So that's, that's a trade-off. And of course, it says basically, yeah, I'm taking all the legal responsibilities for this code, so if I'm pushing code, which is, I don't know, 
patent encumbered. Of course, I am the one responsible. It's not anyone else. And there are a couple of agreements available, one for individuals and one for organizations. So if you work for a big company, it's not that each and every one of your employee needs to sign an agreement. You can just do it one, once for your entire organization. Okay, what else? We need to clone Qt from Git. It's quite easy. Just go open the Q website. There's a nice URL and you clone it. Like in all good cooking TV shows, I've already done it before because I don't want to be cloning some gigabytes of data right here, right now. And it works like this. You just clone it and you run the script, which is called the repository. And when you, once you do that, you should be looking at something like this, which is a bunch of subdirectories. Well, let me zoom it a little bit, if I can, yeah. Which is a bunch of subdirectories. Each one contains a particular Qt submodule. Okay, that's easy peasy. We then have to do one extra step, which is installing a commit hook. We're going to see what that is, what that means. It's just basically running one single command, that just does some magic. And then you can build Qt from source. You've probably already built, how many of you have already built Qt from SUS before? Please raise your hands. Okay, so it shouldn't scare you that it's just like an easy stuff. Uh, the, the only important thing you, you might want to do is pass that flag over there. It's called developer build. It just means it tells Qt to export some extra symbols so it can actually run autotests on your SUS code. And yeah, we're going to see that you need autotests. So yeah, if you can want to uh, take a look. I should have something like this here. Status, yeah, oh, sorry. That's a command line I used before, so basically I run it in an in-source build, passing developer build, debug, open source, confirm license, don't make tests, don't make examples. That's just like any other command line you can run to build Qt from sources and it will do it. Okay, that's the end of the one-time setup, okay? Once you've done that, everything's just fine. And you can start making any number of patches. Fine. So this is Git, and we need to pick a branch to work within. Which branch do we need to pick? Uh, there used to be quite a mess until 5.3, basically because there were several branches and people would, did not understand which branch tracked which version. Uh, now, all of that has ended and we use version branches. So basically, you have a, when you clone Qt, you get a branch called 5.3, a branch called 5.4, because of course it's about to be released. Uh, and there is also, there's always a branch called dev, which is all where all the new feature development goes in. Which one should you pick? Well, the rule of thumb is, of course, is common sense, okay? If you're submitting a new feature or some kind of destabilizing change, then target dev. Otherwise, target, you know, the closest branch, which is still open, and, of course, in which your patch makes sense. So if you're fixing a bug against 503, submit to 503. If you're fixing a bug which does not exist in 503 but exists in, Q in 504, submit against that branch. Yeah, and as you can may have heard from Lars at the beginning, beginning in the initial keynote, Qt4 has a special, some special rules. Uh, it's going towards end of, end of life, of course, but we don't accept any new feature in Qt4, so don't try submit them, they will be get rejected. And we don't accept bug fixes in Qt4 unless they have already been fixed in Qt5. We don't want any regression to happen. So the rule is you can submit bug fixes, but either they, are, they have already been fixed in Qt5 or they just don't apply to Qt5 because the code has changed too much. Uh, there is a small script which is called git Qt cherry pick that just does all the magic of mapping your, your patch from the Qt5 repository into a Qt4 repository. Okay, 
And now I'll try to do something which is very dangerous, which is do live coding. I think people hate that, but <laughs> let me try it. So uh, I wanted to pick something simple for this task, and I couldn't think of anything simpler rather than add a small feature. Uh, there are lots of small features you may try to add. Uh, the one I've settled down is just adding a small method to a nice class, which is called QRECT. Let me close this. So as you can see, QRECT is just a, a class in Qt, which perhaps a rectangle. It has all nice methods about you know, the bottom left corner, the top right corner, etc. But it's like in one nice method, which is the area. And I'm going now to add it to just show to you that, yeah, you can do this very, very easily. It's just like modifying any other code base. So somewhere in here, I don't know where, let, let, let's find, yeah, around here, I can add a new method that just calculates the area of a rectangle. I'm doing it live, I promise. So please don't shut at me if, okay, I'm trying to make very, very simple like that. Then add the definition, and this should be if I think if my math doesn't fail me, something like that. Okay, it's simple and effective. You still with me? Is that okay with you? Okay, <laughs> for judgment. And of course, now we can build cute, but let me first do some, something else. Which is something you didn't see, I'm sorry. I can rebuild Qt. Okay, it takes, a, oh, it takes just a second. Okay, such a small change. Voila, done. It still compiles, which is good. Sorry? Okay. It still compiles, everything's fine. And now how do, how do I submit this thing to, to the upstream? Well, there's nothing uh, worse than the command line, therefore I'm going to use actually Creator to do all this stuff. Creator, if you don't know it, uh, has a quite good Git integration. And if, if you open the small menu here by pressing Ctrl K, you can actually run Git commands inside Creator, and there's a nice UI for most of the Git commands. So what I'm going to do here is basically ask it. Sorry, I lost focus. Yeah, I can type git and it offers me a bit of auto completion here so I can diff it, log it, blame it, do a lot of stuff. What I want to do is basically stage this file for committing and I also want to stage the header for committing. That means git select this, this file and they will be included in the next commit. And then I can actually do the commit. Voila. Okay, quite magic, but uh, yeah, everything is there. I can just type something interesting, like uh, uh, describe a possibly meaningful commit message, something like uh, correct add every method. I can click here, and yeah, worked. Now the last commit, if I show it, it's this add area method. Can I also click on show? Yeah. Let me resize this thing a little bit. So this is actually showing the diff and the commit message on top. And as you can see, uh, there is that special line that has been added for me by the commit hooks. It's not really important, just leave it alone. It's for just management purposes, okay? Good, I created a commit, now what? I can push this commit for code review, which is basically the process you must go through every time you do a patch. And again, you may run it from a common line, but you can also do it from here. So it, there should be a command called push to Garrett over there. And yeah, it asks me some things like uh, what's the local branch? It's dev. Since it's a new feature, I need to push it to the dev branch. The remote is Garrett, and that's actually the patch I want to push. So I just need to 
Click OK. It will think a little bit. Please don't use the network. Yeah, done. OK. Garrett replied to me with an URL, which is the URL at which I can review the patch. Don't do it, please. <laughs> Sorry about that. I have nice colleagues. They love me. And there we go. This is, how, this is my patch. It's ju just been created and published over on Garrett. This is the code of your website. And, and I think I can find some comments right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the website in which all code review happens. It's just a Garrett installation. Garrett is practically the de facto standard when doing this kind of reviews using Git. And I can see the diff. I can analyze it. I can comment stuff. I, I can double click here to do a comment if I want to comment on someone's patches. I can also leave a score and I will see what that means. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay. Just a, a bit of general knowledge about this process. Yeah. Uh, you need to follow some coding style, some guidelines. There are, there's a long list of to do and don'ts about code style, API design, uh, you know, general rules about what to write in a commit message. In general, you should privilege common sense unless you're working with these guys. Uh, but yeah, it's just a long list. Actually, it's very inspiring, and mo many code bases borrowed that kind of code style design decisions because, of course, they come from like 15 years of experience in this field, so or 20 years of experience now. And yeah, this is basically the workflow you do in Git if you want it by hand. I didn't want to do it; I just used Garrett to do it. Uh, don't worry. I mean, I've published the slides. If you really want to eat on on the shell, it's just fine. Okay, and this is, of course, the command line you use to push something to Garrett. So it's git push, then Garrett as a remote. Head is the name of the local thing to push, so just basically the la very last patch. And then refs for target branch, and target branch is dev or 5.4 or 5.3. Don't worry, it's just like automatic. So, of course, the problem is I got those nice guys over here, but how do you get your patch reviewed, right? Well, there are some tools you can use, okay? You can always add me, because I'm always around, <laughs> and I, I can add the relevant people if you don't find anyone, but usually you can just run git log or git blame on your file, or you can just figure out what, who is the maintainer for the module of the area you just like patching. So add the person in question, or just come on, you know, just get on the mailing list, fire off an email saying, I upload this patch, I was interested in reviewing it, and I can actually show you, there is a nice list of maintainers somewhere, yeah, here. I'm zoom it a lot, oh, yeah, of course this website is broken, but, so basically you can see that, yeah, there's a lot of people around from all the various areas. So if you're doing a patch against Q3D, you can add my colleague Sean. Uh, yeah, those are all the maintainers around Qt. Some areas are still a bit unmaintained, but don't worry, we'll find someone to review it. <laughs> Whether they want or not, so yeah. Okay, let me go back here. Yes, uh, as I mentioned, there is a scoring system used in, on Garrett. Uh, it's pretty obvious. There are five scores that range from minus two to plus two. Uh, starting from the negative one, minus two means, no, this patch cannot go in. I totally disagree with it. I totally disagree with the concept or the given implementation is broken beyond repair. Just don't push it. Uh, minus one used to have a scary message, but now it's something like, look, I'm not okay with it. 
as is right now, but if you just change it a little bit, then I'm fine. Zero, well, it's just like no non-opinion expressed. Plus one means it is okay for me, but I, I'm not very competent in that area. I don't, I don't ha want to take the responsibility of saying, yes, let's approve it. And plus two, it's approved. Then you can get this course for many people at the same time, like those two guys over here, but don't worry because they don't sum up. So yeah, you can get any number of plus one, that doesn't mean that your patch gets approved, or you can get any number of minus one, that doesn't mean that your patch can't go in. And just like has actually happened to, the me, or to me right now, yeah, someone will minus one your patch. It will happen all the time, and very likely will, your very first patch, someone like Ossie will just show up and say, no. <laughs> Does, I don't like it. So don't worry if that happens, happens all the time. And as I showed you, people will leave comments telling you it's missing this, it's missing that, or like, yeah, style violation. So it means please read the style guidelines there on the wiki and fix your code. Or missing documentation, missing tests, also very popular. So how do you improve that? Don't worry, There's, there are no problems. We can just go back to the code and improve it. So if I go back to the code somewhere here, so let me close all this. I think that, where, where is the Firefox? Someone <laughs> wrote no unit tests or documentation. <laughs> and also James left one in line comment about something. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so we, we'd like to improve on this. Let's, for instance, add a bit of documentation on this, on this method, on this thing here, so I need to write. As you can see, there's also a bit of documentation below, so you can imagine how documentation in Qt is written using this, oh, sorry. Yeah, great Italian keyboard. I can just write something here using the QDoc syntax telling me, yeah, return. angle, some other special tag like since 5.5, .5, since this would be targeting the next Qt version. Okay, so I improved my patch a little bit by adding the needed pieces of documentation. How do we go about this? First of all, I need to, of course, again, stage this thing. So I get stage correct for commit. But the important bit now is not to create another commit that just includes that piece of documentation, because that would be wrong. Then we would have like two half patches instead of one complete one. And therefore, the important bit to remember is that we don't need to create a new commit. We need to amend, sorry, amend last commit. So we're just modifying the, the commit we just did by improving, by building on it by adding documentation, tests, or whatever feedback we got from our reviewers. So I can commit again, and I can push again. I can push to Garrett. It's wrong, I don't get why it's also wrong. It thinks a little bit, yay. It should be telling me that, well, it, it, it's not telling me a new URL for my patch, that's because it's using the old one. If I go back to, to the code review system, now you can see that I just uploaded patch set two. Sorry, let me zoom this a little bit again, yeah. Okay, and indeed, now you can see there are two patch sets. This is the old one with the comment, you know, people telling me it's broken, and that's the new one, which hopefully has been slightly improved. So I can again diff it and I see the code I tried to add and so on. Yeah, nice, easy. And of course, I would like to add more users than those two guys. So in this field here, I can add more people. Well, I don't know who I can add. I can add another colleague of mine. I won't add Mark, well, let's add Mark Woods. Yeah. 
I see what happens. And also Aussie. <laughs> 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 Let's see what happens then. Also, Lars. Yeah, let's have fun. I, 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 you know, I like I like to play things on myself. Sorry. <laughs> okay, but yeah, the important bit is that do not create a new series of commits. Each one filling a, li a little hole in your patch. Just squash everything together and do that. Yeah, docs and tests. Yes, you must write documentation and you must write tests. So, of course, documentation is pretty much mandatory for any new feature. You must document any new class, a new function you add. And tests are pretty much mandatory as well. Just a, there are a few exceptions in some corner cases. Just, I mean, if a feature is really not testable, such as, I don't know, something related to OpenGL, like OpenGL classes are very poorly tested. That's because running tests for that kind of stuff is quite complicated. Uh, the good news is Qt uses Qt as sleep for its own tests, and the tests are nicely organized in that kind of hierarchy. So you have a subdirectory called tests, auto, uh, then the module like core lib or GUI or widgets, and then actually each class sits in its own subdirectory like that. So for Qrect, sorry, there is also a nice test under the Qrect under the, sorry, let me, let me open this. There you go. It's under, can I see that? No, I can't, sorry. It's under tests, auto, core lib, tools, Qrect. You got a nice test for, for rectangle. I won't go through the entire Q test lib now, but as you can see, Qrect, as simple as it might be, is actually as a very big test. It's data-driven test. And of course, tries to see that if all the corner cases make sense. It's actually very long. It's, yeah, 4K line of tests for this apparently trivial thing. But it shows you that, of course, for this feature, you can just get inspired by the other source code, inspired, and just, you know, basically copy and paste one of those tests, change the goals in there. To, sorry. A failed attempt of all my life, I guess. <laughs> and uh, you, can, you can just copy and paste a couple of those tests and, you know, in there try to invoke rect area and see if the results are those expected. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the time to go through that right now, but it's really that easy. Okay. I got an approved patch, right? I, I don't think I can show you right now one, but if I open Garrett and show to, this is my Garrett actually. Those are my patches, those are, those are my pending patches over there. As you can see, I pretty much do stuff all around Qt. I, I work on OpenGL stuff, uh, core lib, regular expressions. You see I also patches for SSL. And those are the patches I've been asked to review. Again, as you can see, stuff going <laughs> all around the place. What happens when you get a patch approved? Well, it's just that you could, you could get a nice button over here saying stage. I don't get it because this patch has not been approved, but I can open another patch which, I, which has, if I find it. Yeah, there's one over here. Yeah, you got this nice button which says merge patch to staging. And that is actually what brings your patch from the outside to inside Qt, okay? So you need to remember, staging is not automatic. The main reason for that is that you are the person in charge of it, so you may know that if this patch, for instance, is depending from other ones, then you don't want to stage just random patches in random order. You want to stage them one at, one at a time in order to make sense. And remember all the tests that we actually talked about a moment ago? Yeah, they actually run. So there is a CI system that will run all the tests on the Qt code base. And of course, your patch must pass those tests. Now for a bit of performance reasons, what happens actually is that more patches are tested together. So they're bundled together and like 10, 20 at a time get and get staged and tested 
and of course any one of them may cause a failure in some test. If that happens, of course, all of them are rejected, including one, including of course yours, which possibly didn't cause any test, so any test failure. So if that happens, just like click stage again and keep clicking it until, until it gets accepted. <laughs> just put, yeah, just put a drinking bird on the stage button. Uh, otherwise, of course, if you see the log from the test and the test says, yeah, your patch just failed to integrate because your test has failed, then of course go there, fix the code and push again. And yeah, luckily in the end, you got a merged patch. Okay, great. And you become finally a cute contributor. Uh, just a bit of sales pitch here. If you feel that this thing may get too complicated and you, know, you don't want to do all the setup and you want to investigate how to fix it, etc. I mean, of course, if you have a bug report, you want to figure out where in Qt actually is the bug, spend some time on it, fix it, etc. So if you want, you want to go through the whole process, basically KDAB is announcing a new service. It's called fixmyqtbug.com. And it's kind of unique service, service in that we'll do all that work from you. We will investigate the bug in Qt, we will fix it, we will upstream the patch and get it landed in Qt. Or if, that's, if that patch gets rejected for any reason, we will maintain it for you for a number of years. Okay. Okay, end of the sales pitch. Most of the stuff you just saw are available at the URL. That's the single thing you must remember from this talk, basically. So if you just go on cuteproject.org slash contribute, you can find all the information, all the wiki pages, all, all the uh, guidelines, you know, troubleshooting guides and instructions, detailed instructions, all to do all these steps. There is also a mailing list for this kind of stuff. It's separate from the general mailing list, which is called interest. This mailing list is called development. I think it's broken wording because development should mean people who are actually using Qt, not people who are actually developing Qt, but okay. Or there's an IRC channel, it's called Qt Labs, so I, I'm there most of the time when I work. Okay, any questions short, but any questions? <laughs> First, thank you. Yeah, and, um, Damn it, I forgot my question. Um, yes, um, what happened if I um, see, okay, there's a bug, and I found someone who has um, committed something, for example, a, a bug fix, and then uh, something, what our documentation is failing or testing is failing, uh, is not available. Can I also um, add um, this one to, uh, can I also patch the patch? Yes. Yes, you can. Uh, and how? Have I then find out which um, uh, where this is? Com how can I find out where it's committed the, um, this patch and then to uh, um, to add the patch? I see now you have n you you, go you add the patch, then James um, changed something and said, okay, it's there's no documentation in it, and then you um, took your code and uh, add something and committed again. What I I is if I found the patch? I want now to get that patch on my computer and then to, um, to um, patch it again. Uh, right, so if I go back to Garrett, sorry, wrong desktop. If you go back here, you can see that, sorry, let, let me open my patch here, so my changes. I hope this is not, yeah, even more people having fun on me, thank you. <laughs> if you go here, you can see there are various links to download that patch locally. Okay, there's a checkout, pull, cherry pick and patch, which, are, which do slightly different things in Garrett. Probably what you want to do is cherry pick it so you can actually extract that patch and apply it locally to your own local Qt-based clone. So just copy and paste that, don't worry what it does. Copy and paste that, run it locally, and this patch will get imported. And after that, you can, for instance, modify it. So if, you f if I decide to, okay, let's abandon this patch, but you found this useful, you can actually modify it and push it back. 
we can actually do exactly what I did by amending this commit. Uh, okay, I don't think I have a, a suitable clone to do this, to run this live, but yeah, that's the idea. You can pretty much import this patch as local. Also, if you want to test it, say I'm adding, I don't know, a nice new widget, so you actually want you know, to run some code and see the widget in action, yes, so you can do that. There's actually a new UI inside, uh, get, inside Creator to do exactly that. Again, if I do git Garrett, yeah, it should show me the changes, and you can select, well, someone else, and click cherry pick over there, you see? And that will take that patch and apply it locally. Then you can change it, improve it, or just you know, test it, because it's a new feature, you want to play with it before approving it or whatever. And if I may add one note, before you change someone else's patch, it would be nice if you just ask him about it. So, uh, yeah. some consider it rude <laughs> if you just change their patches. Yeah, of course. <laughs> just be polite. And Bug fixing to several branches? Yes. So, as I told you some slide ago, uh, let's say you found a bug and you can actually see that it's an old bug, so it applies to even 5.3, which is still around. You just need to target the lowest branch, which that bug still applies. So if you apply a patch against 5.3, then that from time to time, typically once a week, the entire set of patches landed in 5.3 will get merged upstream. So you get the same bug fixes in 5.4 and in dev, after a couple of weeks. Uh, there are periodic mergers done by, well, a couple of people. Uh, so don't worry about that. It, uh, all patches will eventually land upstream. The only exception is, of course, if the code in the meanwhile has changed too much. In that case, it would be better to submit two separate patches because, of course, your patch will not apply cleanly on the target branch. But that's more like an exception than the rule. Usually, if you found a bug and you've made, made it a patch for, to it, chances are that it will apply as is to the subsequent branches. So just submit it to 5.3, and other people will take care to push it forward. Um, <clears throat> you didn't mention Jira at all. Is it um, yes, that's mandatory to use Jira, or can you simply file a bug fix without any Jira ID? Yeah, uh, there's been in the past a bit of discussion about the actual workflow. Uh, the answer is it's not mandatory to use Jira at all. Uh, you just, I mean, you sign up on Jira to create an account, but then you can just submit bug fixes without any task number. Uh, so, for instance, if I sorry, close this and open a couple of patches of mine, you can, sorry, I can show it in action, actually, because, sorry, yeah. Those are my patches. Oh, what, sorry, yeah. This is fixing a bug. This is a bug fix I submitted some days ago. And as there are no GEO reports for this one. Okay, it's just a bug I found in the code. I submitted the fix, and it got merged. As you can see, the status is merged over there. So it's not mandatory at all. The only rule is, if there is a Jira bug report, then you must mention it in the comment message. Okay? So, let me show you something else, something which has actually a Jira, Jira task, like, oh dear. I should have some around here, this one here. No, it doesn't, sorry. I can find it one out of my mind, but Yeah, let me find something about that. As you can see, I have lots of stuff going on. Uh, oh dear, uh, yeah, this one here, for instance. This one is a bug fix. Uh, I'm trying to maintain Q widgets in a good shape. And this thing here is, was a bug report reported over there. 
So that's the link to the bug report. If you, I mean, if there is a bug report, then please link to it using that task number, semicolon, name of the bug, if there is one. If there is, don't bother about, I mean, there's no, there are no rules about that. There's been a bit of discussion, but uh, ultimately people decided, no, it's too much overhead. It will scare people, so just like, go ahead, submit your bug, your patch, sorry. Sorry? Uh, well, th the fact is there is nothing automatic that then, I mean, apart from the link there, there is nothing automatic that will, for instance, automatically close the bug report or something like that. You still need to do all the manual steps uh, to actually, you know, they go there and say, okay, this bug has been fixed in this release and so on. There is nothing like that. And therefore, uh, after this thing actually gets merged, I needed to go here and manually say, yeah, th this thing here will be fixed in 5.33, which is not even go going to be released, and uh, change it actually uh, contains the fix. Is that one over there? And this is actually a very old bug report, three, three or four years old. So you still need to go that by hand. Uh, the two systems don't communicate very well. So don't, I mean, that's why people said don't bother to create a bug report just for the sake of you know, fixing and then going back there, filling in all the blanks eventually. So it's just fine. Uh, this wasn't actually my question, but uh, now I want to ask, uh, is there a, a planning to move towards Jira and Stash? Because in latest Stash and Jira, this is automatically. And I don't know, I was curious if you think that Stash is mature enough to replace Garrett or... Uh, yeah. We've we, been using Stash in a couple of projects and it was very, very suboptimal sub when compared to Garrett workflow. Uh, especially the fact, I mean, especially the workflow we get here uh, is pretty good. But the fact is, yes, there is the possibility of some, integ some automatic integration. Uh, the whole problem is, for instance, that, okay, if I submit that change, perhaps that's just a partial fix, so I don't want this task to be closed. I want it, it to still be open in the meanwhile, while it, this, get, this gets all the necessary changes in place and so on. So I think that currently there's just uh, fisheye in place somewhere, I don't remember the URL, which will link some stuff together, but there, there's nothing automatically, I mean, nothing, no actions are automatically done when something gets merged. Uh, I'm personally not in charge of such decisions about, the, you know, <laughs> what, which thing to use. Uh, we tried Stash, we tried um, Review Board, we tried Garrett, and in the end we settled down on Garrett because it was the thing that matched. Do you, do you keep, uh, do you keep uh, adding stuff to Garrett or is it just the same since years ago? Uh, Actually, uh, it's been worked on. It used to be uh, like a private Nokia fork. Uh, now I think uh, it's mostly running the same version upstream. It will, we're lagging a couple of versions behind, but it's most likely because of nobody bothered to update or something like that. Uh, so if I open Garrett, you should actually see the version in the bottom right corner. Yeah, which is 2.7, I believe we are at 2.9 or 2.10 right now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, people are working to keep any changes that we do. For instance, one very useful change, which is this one here, the one that allows you to, oh, of course, got the wrong file, yeah. The one to let you open all of those diffs in the same, in the same browser tab. This thing here that does not happen yet with the upstream Garrett. It's a patch of ours. It's a patch that Qt is using. To add, if you try to do that with the upstream Garrett, it will open like 10 browser tabs, one per each file, uh, possibly totally crashing your browser usually, if, especially if one of those is like a several thousand lines of code. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks. Okay. Uh, one, one question. Uh, is it easy to balance like uh, the open source life work with uh, the, 
I don't know, the work for clients. I don't know. Is it easy to work for clients while working also in open source world? Or do you uh, also go is. into your personal time or? Uh, yeah, okay. It's a, 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 a bit off topic as a question. I mean, I can reply privately later. But yes, I mean, uh, as part, of, actually, okay, official answer. As part of my KidUp duties, uh, I'm in charge of like coordinating KidUp efforts inside Qt. Okay, so KidUp uh, maintains several submodels. We maintain, we are developing Qt3D. We maintain widgets. We maintain. If you, if you look up the maintainers list, we maintain a lot of stuff. Therefore, it's part of our jobs to actually contribute stuff to Qt and keep Qt in a good shape. And of course, as you can imagine, it's also like a strategic investment for us, right, to keep Qt running. Uh, that have been said, of course, working with customers and sometimes you get a bug in Qt, it's always you know, good to show that, yeah, I can fix it upstream. So. I mean, we're so good that we know the source, we know what's going on inside Qt and we can actually fix it. Fix it. So the, there is not, I mean, most of the time there is nothing to be balanced. I mean, customers are happy with us being so competent, so good that we can, found, we can find bug in Qt and fix them. It's just like that. Okay. Um, if I fix the bug and uh, write the documentation, at, uh, and if I get problems for the testing, because I don't know how to, um, to do the testing, is, that, is there a possibility that someone can help me with that? Yes, of course. Uh, please ask on the mailing list or ping me. I'm Pepe on <laughs> on Jabber, or ping other people saying uh, I'd like to. I've developed this feature. Uh, would like to. I'd like to add a test, of course. Uh, how do you go about that? And people can surely help you out. In fact, Qt is one of the most helpful communities out there. There, there have been a, a couple of talks at last LinuxCon, I believe, of people just like amazed about how helpful Qt developers are when you know someone gets into trouble and people actually give you good solutions to it. So just please write to either the development mailing list or an IRC or you know on the forums, someone will step up telling you, yeah, look, look at this example there, it's just like what you need for your duty, and, you know, get inspired from it. Okay, any more questions? Let me go back here. Okay, I think that's it. So, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you again. <laughs> Giuseppe D'Angelo.